and uh, welcome to this video about, or this session about uh, guitar techniques, because what I just did there was actually not that hard. Of course, everything on a guitar is hard, because you have to, you know, everything <laughs> on a guitar is hard, so, um, but, but uh, compared to a piano, for instance, let me just focus on that. Well, you know, you can go to a piano, you can push the button or the key there, and it says a, it, you get a perfect note. That's not like that on a guitar. You have to struggle with everything here. But uh, so it's easy uh, compared to other techniques. Alternate picking, for instance, is much harder. It takes much longer time to learn and much more focus and concentration than this. So why is it that most of us go for alternate picking as the most important thing if it's the hardest way to produce fast lines? Well, very simple explanation, because it's the hardest. So uh, among guitarists, alternate picking or harder techniques than this becomes, you know, the most... Uh, the, the best thing you can go for, and so we do. But if you look at people who don't play guitar and they, you know, look at what I just did, they'll go, oh, that must be the most advanced thing in the world to do on a guitar, you know, tapping and not using a pick, that's magical. Um, but so if you really want to uh, have a tool in the fastest way possible whereby you can play fast, then why not go for some techniques that are easier to, to get to than alternate picking or economy picking or something like that. Uh, because with tapping, we can do arpeggios, we can do fast runs, we can do scale runs, we can do everything. Um, if you just take your, uh, your left hand here and just add the index finger of the right hand, you suddenly get a, an enormous amount of uh, stretching ability on the fretboard. Um, and of course you have some new challenges. The strings make a lot of noise when you try to pick like that or play like that. Um, you have to tap with your first finger and we got different challenges there. And um, I built some, some great methods of, of overcoming these challenges uh, easily and gradually without thinking about it. But f let's look into uh, the licks that I just played. The whole basis of this uh, portion here is to say, okay, what would happen, instead of going for every technique in the universe, full tilt, then what would happen if you said, okay, from a learning curve perspective, learning the easiest thing first makes a lot of sense because the brain learns best when it has a challenge that is big enough to be a challenge, but small enough to be, you know, something that you can really overcome in a relatively short period of time. That's when we feel motivated because we can see the goal in front of us and it's not two years away or one year. And so what, what if you took this kind of playing, tapping, and then said, oh, legato combined with tapping, and then really went into it and became very, very, very good at it so that you could play licks, you could play solos, and then throw in a fast line effortlessly just using that finger going back to phrasing and picking again? What if you developed that ability? Um, how cool would that be? And the truth is here that you can develop this ability like in a tenth of the time it takes you to just develop one simple alternate picking lick to perfection. So, so this is really about having fun, uh, you know, looking into these licks, these techniques. And I've got a really good for you, uh, a really good sequence for you today that we're going to look at in the next video because we're going close up. Uh, and we'll just look at it and then look at some some uh, uh, basic ways to move it around the neck. And then in the next section, we'll uh, look into some two-handed tapping where you don't, you're not picking at all and you have to tap with your first finger, but that's the next section. So for now, let's go to the uh, close-up video and let's look at the first sequence that I'm going to show you. So uh, let's jump into it. <laughs> 